Hi there, everybody. Happy Friday. It's also National Talk, Talk Like Shakespeare Day. Um, so I'm going to try and sprinkle some of that in through today's show. Um, but in the meantime, I am really excited to present an awesome, ultra-talented musician, a guy who's tuned in from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and his name is Joey Friendo. How are we doing, Joey? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Um, so the move went well, it sounds like, and you're, uh, it looks like the room that you're sitting in, at least, is nice and um, accustomed to the area, and you've got oh, everything yeah. unpacked. Definitely. Um, nice. There's like one or two rooms that are, you know, don't enter because all the stuff we haven't found a home yet. Yep. Uh, home yet for is, uh, but overall, it's been good. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend uh, moving during a global pandemic, but all considering it's been, it's been really wonderful, and we're making a new home here, so. Heck yeah. Well, whoever did the decorating, also, I'm really digging it. Like, I love the whole ladder with the blanket setup. I'm actually yeah. waiting for a ladder to come in the mail from Amazon to do the same thing. So, Blanket nice. ladders for life. <laughs> um, and then what is that I see peeking behind your elbow? Is that butter? Wow. <laughs> butter. Very nice. I'm glad you got it in time. World's smallest bottle of butter. <laughs> Oh, did you drizzly it, or were we able to ship it to you? No, the, one of the uh, fun things about living in a new state is you don't know all the rules. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the liquor laws here, and as far as like getting um, stuff shipped mm -hmm. via the liquor department, does not they don't like that. So <sighs> Greg tried like a bunch of stuff, but could not get it. So I just I went to the we like looked at it on the, he sent me the link for the finder mm -hmm. and there was a, there was a, but there was a liquor store right down the road that had it. So like five oh. minutes away. Heck yeah. Went, got it well, I'm glad it worked out. Cheers. Cheers. If anyone's at home and finds themselves in the same predicament, then you can use our wine finder. That's the tool that uh, Joey's talking about. Just type in your zip code and you can find a liquor mart or supermarket nearest you that supplies our wine. We can also deliver to most states, not Oklahoma, obviously, not Oklahoma. unfortunately, maybe one day. Um, so in the meantime, why don't we kick things off with a song and then we'll get to some more chatting in a sec. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, this one's called Lord's Town. Um, it's going to be the first single off my debut EP. Uh, my new friend Jimmy Palacios was kind enough to debut this on uh, Country Duman on Gimme Country uh, earlier this week, and so I'm excited to be able to play it. Heck yeah. This is the Lord's town I don't want to go to heaven So I've chosen a slow death Wandering high through the seven Eleven Work is all dried up Ain't it just my luck That GM took their cut Then they closed down the plant Sooner or later Beat dog's gonna bite I'm gonna get my shit together But it ain't gonna be tonight Cincinnati to Shreveport Kansas City to Baltimore Detroit To Sleepy Hollow, New York 901 time asking why Stock price is always on the rise Christmas bonuses for all the suits and ties Meantime, I'm off Route 45 With everything on in a bag Sooner or later, the beat dog's gonna bite I'm gonna get my shit together But it ain't gonna be tonight I've got nothing left to lose Except for these out of work blues 
like a Mustang doing plow chores. I got the speed, but not the strength. So, like a gun hand, I'm with kids' toys. I keep the real fight at arm's length. Well, sooner or later, beat dog's gonna bite. Get my shit together, no, but it ain't gonna be tonight. I've got nothing left to lose Except for these out of work blues Except for these out of work blues Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Um, so it looks like, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Jared Stuckey yeah. on Facebook. He said, yes, I know that guy. Oh, there we go. That so shout sweet, out to Jared. That is my sweet brother-in-law. Oh, hello, brother-in-law. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right. So for you, Joey, like, what was sort of the root of your passion for music? Was it um, when you were a kid or... Um, I think you had formed a band with a buddy when you were in high school or after high school with a high school buddy. Yeah, uh, a friend from uh, high school. Well, we weren't even really that close in high school, actually. Um, he was a couple of grades younger than me. His name was Jared Muenberg. Um, he's still one of my very best friends. Um, but yeah, coming out of, I was in college and he was just about to graduate uh, high school um, in good old Fremont, Michigan. Um, yeah, and I just had kind of caught the bug, um, heard some music that opened some doors for me and was like, well, I didn't realize it could be that. Um, and he was kind enough to, you know, start this journey with me. And, um, that was gosh, years ago. And then we started watching for foxes, uh, in 2014, I believe, um, which then became winnow. Uh, and then yeah, late in 2019, um, we decided to push pause on that and that's when I really started to dive into, you know, making solo music and, uh, just knew that I wanted to, you know, continue down this path and it's been a fun journey so far and music has taken me a lot of fun places, giving me a lot of good memories for sure. Heck yeah. Um, the term winnow, isn't that like with the wind or something like that? Isn't that yeah. what it means? Yeah. Uh, it means to like, um. It's like a, it's like, it has to do with, uh, like, like wheat, like the chafe Ooh. from wheat. Um, so, uh, yeah, to like, yeah, to go away with the wind, I think is, is something of that nature, um, to kind of have those parts be separated. Um, Ooh. and so we started the band and then in various different capacities, we added folks as we toured. Um, and then Winnow was us returning to that two piece and exploring that again and, um, made a, made an EP with that project. And then, yeah, just so that life changed a little bit. I had a son, um, you know, just kind of reevaluating and, um, I'd been working for a long time to be able to write music on my own and was learning piano at that time. Um, and hadn't picked up guitar yet, but that came, uh, right before the pandemic is when I decided to, to learn guitar, which was a great time to have lots of time to spend. With yeah, the instrument. true. Uh, now, how old is your son? Because I know now it's like we're like you, you're a parent and you're also a teacher um, and daycare center. If you did daycare before the pandemic, you're you've got the kid all day, every day. So how does that kind of affect music and um, your creative process? So honestly, I um, my son is two um, and the, the pandemic and being a father was a really, like, honestly a gift. Mm -hmm. I know it was devastating for a lot of people, and it was devastating to, you know, our community and our family in different ways, and it was hard. Um, but 
I got to spend because I was I worked at I, I work at a school I worked at a school in Grand Rapids as well and so we were we were shut down and so I spent like six months with my son every day um, and that was that was so much fun I like I will treasure that time forever like listening to music playing guitar for him having you know just just sharing that time with him and so honestly like from a perspective standpoint I think being a father changes the way you look at the world and then um, you know, also, I want to make things and capture stories that, you know, someday he might be rifling through or going through some of my things and find, you know, this record and something that'll be important for him to know or a story that will, um, you know, give him a little more insight into this this world that we're living in. Right. Yeah. And I guess at like his age, being two years old, every single day is just a new thing that they're learning and um, they grow so quickly from age one to, to three. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm sure that has been really nice for you. Yeah, I like you hit the nail on the head too. Like that time, especially like, you know, every, they say every phase becomes your favorite, but to watch him from like a year to two, like, you know, in that two year range, like there was so much growth during that time. And it was honestly so much fun. Um, and I know that like, you know, you know you, you don't get that time back as a parent anyways, right? But um, like I, I'm never going to have probably that much time, uh, like uh, just him and I, again, like that, that much of a stretch of time, hopefully not, you know, knock on wood, um, unless something catastrophic were to happen, which would be terrible, but you know, that's knocking like, on wood right now, no, like another global <laughs> pandemic. I think I just wood on this chair Yeah, there you get go. on my guitar, my guitar is wood. Um, Woo. so yeah, I just like, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't get me wrong. There was days where I was like, I want to have an adult conversation. Mm -hmm. with a with a grown human being and i don't want to listen to baby shark again but, yeah oh my gosh but it was it was by and large really positive and getting to share music with him and go on walks and it was just yeah it was it was a lot of fun have you been watching the coco melon thing i've heard everyone talking about it on netflix no brady my, my son brady is like a is an avid pj masks fan mm, um, he loves pj okay. masks Okay, um, okay. He's also been really into Dino Dana, which is like Ooh. this, yeah. this, it's like a real, it's like live action, but the dinosaurs look very real. And she like gets this, um, like field guide and she, uh, she starts to see dinosaurs like just existing in the world. And she has to solve these scientific things. He's really into that dinosaur. Oh, nice. Gotta, gotta show him, um, land before time yeah, at some point. That. That's a classic. You you know you forget about these ones, you know about these about these movies and mm -hmm. that would be a good one. Yeah. He started he started because he would call them dinos for a long mm -hmm. time and he started calling them dinosaurus. Like we could go to see the dinosaurus and I'm like yeah. I like that. Dinosaurus, like oh, dinosaurus and dinosaur mixed or uh -huh. Taurus. Oh yeah. Like Ford, or Ford Taurus and Dino, like maybe that. There There's go. also this show called Dino Trucks where it's like they're transformers but they're dinosaurs and they're like Ooh. robots. It, it's kind of crazy. He also really likes that one. Wow. I oh, and I see a pop. Oh my goodness. There's Hello. She wants to be in the. Sh <laughs> she wants to be on the show. Hi. <laughs> Why? Hi Ray. Hi, Ray. That's, that's our old pooch Rayleigh. Oh. Hi Rayleigh. <laughs> All right, Joey, um, you got a backup dancer now. So perfect. <laughs> um, all right. Do you want to do, how do you feel about doing like two songs back to back? Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. This song is called I Talk Too Much, and it is going to be on um, that EP I mentioned as well. I talk too much to be an alcoholic So I'll have me a beer Then call it a night That liquor hits my mouth no telling what'll come back out Cause I talk too much to be an alcoholic Sure I've taken some shots and so has my wallet 
as a younger man I could go all night But my habits left me broke Like the butt end to a bad Bad joke at the end of a rope For a few gin and tonics But one of these days I'm gonna find out what I'm good at Be proud to hang my hat on something And not face plan Make sure that what I've got Means more than what I'm not All my sins Didn't have the guts to be a prize fighter Just a mean left hug That I couldn't let and right Count of my glass jar Man, I'd mostly have man hard About what it'd be like to be a prize fighter couldn't go pound for pound, so I gladly retired. But one of these days, I'm gonna find out what I'm good at. Be proud to hang my hat on something and not face plan. Make sure that what I've got means more than what I. All my sins Woo-hoo-hoo dream once I was a day Our law life treated me real nice But I got all in my head Wondering when I'd wind up dead Takes a harder kind of man to be a dead to hang my head on something and not face plan make sure that what I've got means more than what I'm not more than all my sins Thank you. Thank you. Joey Friendo, everybody. Now check him out at the links posted below. I think, um, is your Facebook and your Instagram the same? Yeah, it's at Joey Friendo Music. Music, um, okay. Yeah, and like I said, the, the EP that I'm playing these songs off of, those first two will be the lead singles. Um, you heard it here first. Um, and they should be out around the summer, uh, early fall release for the EP. Um, yeah, gearing up for all that stuff, and I'm really excited for it. Had some great players, great players on it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Sweet. And you'll be updating mostly on Instagram, or do you use Facebook and Instagram equally? Um, I would say for, like, big news gets shared on both. Um, but I do, like, more, like, daily updates on Instagram because I, I seem to gravitate to, towards that more. Facebook can be a little weird sometimes, but um, just a personal opinion. Uh, but Instagram is more daily, but both get shared, uh, like for the important stuff, like the, the need to know, the must know. Um, yes, yes. For sure. Heck yeah. Um, and then do you plan on ever doing like uh, a vinyl release of anything or merch? Is that at all a possibility? Uh, oh, absolutely. I have, uh, I have shirts um, right now. Um, it's the logo on my, there's a logo on my Facebook page and on my Instagram uh, that, that that's the logo on the shirts. Uh, they're in this like cool ash 
color with like a maroon uh, logo on the center. I'm going to get some more merch rolled out along with the EP that kind of coincide with the themes and some imagery in there. Um, vinyl wise, I would really like to do a vinyl. Um, I've been thinking on how to uh, do that because with an EP, sometimes you run, they run a little short. Um, so I'm thinking about ways to do that and there definitely will be vinyl uh, in the future as long as keep folks like you keep being interested in the music and uh, people are listening, I'll keep making songs and uh, there will be vinyl, vinyl will be had. As you see, cool. I have this. I have this shelf of vinyl. Back here. Yeah. I didn't plan on referencing behind me so much, <laughs> but um, yeah. I like that um, that shelving area because you've got the Chardonnay and the vinyl records. It's like the perfect little right. like, little nook in the room. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that was like one of the biggest selling points on this house was this was this area this this bookshelf. That's like been a dream of my wife and I's to have an mm -hmm. area like that. So we we, it, uh, we dig it. Is this a real plant? It is not. Also? It's fake. I it love fake. how it looks real. I have it a lot is. of fake plants, too. So it's like... It is a realistic fake plant. Um, we mm. do have some live ones. We the, In this room, uh, my son likes to sometimes, um, we, 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 we do, he has a little fishing game. He, this is kind of his room. Like, if you saw what else is happening, like, below deck, there's lots of, there's toys. He's got his, his uh, lots of toys around, but... You can't see any of that now because I made it look all fancy. But yeah. so this is kind of his area. So the <laughs> the 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 fake plant was kind of a must. But mm -hmm. we have some greenery around here. Love it. All right. Uh, you want to do another song? Yeah. Um, Sweet. Thank you. You got it. Uh, this one is called O3 Envoy. It's an unreleased one. It's one I've been working on for a while, but I wrote after the after the EP was done. Um, it's a, kind of a sad one. It's a sad one of the set. The, all my all my songs kind of have a tinge of Midwestern sadness to them, I think. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to sadness. Must have wore a horn The stations of the cross Praying for some kind of clue To get through this month Now I've got nothing in my pockets My only pair of shoes Got the toe blown out. Souls want right through. I was born to be a casualty of better men, bigger dreams. I could use a warm bed, a new place to get lost. But you sleep in your car. It's the only thing you've got. I guess praying was good for something after all. all. Been on both my feet Would have been a hell of a fall I was born to be a casualty of better men Big dreams Die with dirty boots Worn out jeans I guess Sing me a song and send me along to some brighter place where I belong. Maybe then I could get some rest. It's a lonesome holy road I'm on. And it's 
should be to being buried beneath the ground. But I am no doubt counting down to when smooth the sailing comes around. Comes around. So I must still for a home. The stations across. For some kind of clue To get through last night Woo! Thank you, Joey. Um, it is, okay, so that last song for everybody who's tuned in is 03 Envoy? Is that Yes, like correct? the year. Oh, okay, okay. 03. Patrick, All right. Oh, zero three. Is that year significant? Um, so, me and that car. So it's it's in reference to uh, a car that I spent a uh, a good amount of time with uh, in a very formative part of my life. From like probably just before I turned twenty one uh, until I was like twenty five, which is like uh, I feel like a very seismic time in everybody's mm -hmm. life. Um, and it was not, it was a nice car when I got it. Not as nice when I, it sounded like a helicopter by the time, like it was very loud. <laughs> um, and you know, that, that song, a lot of my songs are stories uh, that are fictionalized, um, but have like kernels of truth in them uh, or like insights I've found or, you know, dramatized things. That song is uh, one of the songs I wrote that's very autobiographical. There was a good stretch of time uh, right before I met my wife where I was living out of that that 2003 GMC Envoy um, and I just think it was this you know encapsulation of a time in my life that was really really formative and um, wild and uh, I look back on fondly now that I'm done with it um, yeah and can see like you know what it meant to me and um, I think you know if, if I have any friends or family who are watching um, they, they know that car well <laughs> and uh, yeah it, a lot a lot of good memories in there we like we, we toured in that uh, like at the very first part of watch for foxes um, yeah it, my wife wouldn't let it, we only got rid of it like a year ago my wife would not let our son drive in that ever so we had to get rid of it he's like that thing is waiting to fall apart you oh my gosh it. you're like no i wanted to pass it down i know <laughs> it's fine it'll, it'll still go yeah um did you have like an actual name other than 03 envoy for it because i feel like when you have an emotional attachment to a car you usually end up giving it a nickname at least in my experience <laughs> i uh i didn't i don't actually think i ever nicknamed it so at what? that time i yeah which is kind of crazy to think about it i haven't thought about that um no, our two our tour vans always had a nickname. Um, one was passed down to us from another band with a name already. Her name okay. was Victoria. Um, okay. And then we had a, we had a band band named Clarence. But yeah, that one didn't have a that one didn't have a. I think when once you call a thing home, yeah. it just becomes that, and it's like well, that just now it's just a car. Cause it That's was true. And now it's That's just a car. True. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, like I said, that so that song is just about like in those times, just feeling like you know you're destined for this thing that that is less than you thought, but that's kind of you feel like all you deserve. Mm -hmm. um, is also that a free, there's a freedom in that too? But yeah, it is sad still. Is that song like what you would classify? Because I know you've you've named like your style of music in the past as like the flannel rock or like the sweater rock and like the sad boy folk. Right. Um, is that kind of what you would call that song in terms of the style of music? Or I think I think like I do, like I said I, I do look back on those watching for foxes times as very formative. Like I don't think you can be in a band that's together for you know years and been all around that it's and not have it be formative. Um, but I think, you know, the way I would categorize my music now is, is, is pretty bland, but I would, I would just consider myself a, a singer songwriter and somebody who is aspiring to be a working singer songwriter. Um, cause all that matters to me is like cataloging those stories. Um, 
for whoever finds meaning and importance in them. And that's what my heroes have done. Um, and that's what I want to do. Um, and I think, you know, stories hold lots of different emotions in them. And that one is mm-hmm. sad, but I, um, you know, I want to, I want to capture that spectrum of human emotion and experience, um, mm-hmm. and the way that, and the, and the best way that I can. And, um, you know, the things that strike me, uh, that have meaning to me and the people I love. And, um, that's been the way that I found is the best way to connect with other people too, is like write things that strike me and care about that I, that I care about and that were important to me. And then, um, then that license and like ownership, uh, gives that same license and ownership to other people, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, going back to the, going back to the car thing, I, I super related to that song because so the car that I drive and I started driving when like literally from my driver's license test when I had just turned 16 still driving it um it was yeah (laughs) it's a 2004 yeah it's um but you know it, it is a very near and dear piece of my life it was my mom's car and she passed away and um So I ended up with her old 2004 Ford Explorer, Um, used to name it Dora, call it Dora, the Explorer, but I thought that was too cliche. So now it's Olaf, like the frozen (laughs) snowman. Um, But yeah, I I don't know. I'm going to drive this car until it can't drive anymore. Just 100%. You know, cars for anyone. Um, I've, I've slept in that car before plenty of times, you know, like camped in it camped out of it and it's taken me amazing places to college um on amazing road trips so i think cars that's something that a lot of people don't think about it's like such a a huge part of your life yeah and i think it is a not a wholly like not a not an only an american um like totem but i think it is an important one for like our society and culture like that is a huge it's a huge it's a huge thing in our culture for better or for worse it is it is like a it is a, it's a thing it's like our it's like our it's like an incarnation of our need to manifest destiny across the it's like it for better or for worse that is what it is you know and it's this yep. beautiful symbol for a lot of different things it's a vessel that holds memories and actual physical mechanical workings it's like i think it you know not to get too snooty highfalutin but i have had half a glass of wine so um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i do think it's like a i think the vehicle is a is a like a is an important metaphor for our american society and our american experience and lordstown is about that is about that too it's about the um it's kind of based around the idea uh in that gmc 2003 gmc envoy (laughs) i used to my friends used to make fun of me because the car was so loud that i would have to listen to npr really loud so like i would pull up somewhere (laughs) and they could like hear there was like npr really loud and also my car that sounded like it was like sucking up large amounts of air um, that's how mine sounds kind of thing. i just <laughs> exactly. i do the same thing it's like yes. i think there's a meme where it's like you just turn up your radio and pretend that your car exactly. doesn't sound like shit. <laughs> exactly and it's like and the, uh, I, actually the ford the ford and the gmc on like the ford explorer and the gmc on boy very similar cars mm-hmm. um, and so but one day i was listening in my gmc envoy listening uh to the story of the, the, like, the Lordstown auto strikes. And then there's also an, like, I heard that and that kind of struck me and that's kind of contained in that is the story of these like GM gypsies where they would, mm. um, there was like these people who would, the, the factories in the certain part, and I'm hoping I'm not butchering this now, but there would be these factories that GM would have, uh, that would shut down and they would get moved. And they were basically like, you can keep your job and move to this place or you can not have a job. Yeah. And so what? there were these people kind of following around these like closed auto factories and because they had moved, it was like seemingly happening like more and more. And so that's what Lordstown is about, is about like, oh. and all those all those locations are places that um, like have had, had auto factories shut down. And especially in the Midwest, it is like, that is a huge part of our, you know, that Rust Belt identity and such a huge part of those communities. And so, I thought it was a fitting metaphor for like, you know, chasing down this thing that you might not necessarily want, but that you have to have and kind of like ending up in this place, Lordstown, Ohio, and being like, what, what, how did I get here? You know? Right. Um, And so 
O3 Envoy is like kind of a, is like an extension of that narrative, I think. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, now I'm going to like listen very closely because I want to hear more of these metaphors as we keep going. But um, Dropping let's them on see. You. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. So if we, I want to be able to squeeze as much music into today's show as possible. How about we do another couple songs back to back? Okay. Let's do it. Perfect. Cheers, Joey. Cheers. So this one is called Stonemason's Son. It is off that EP I mentioned. And it is the title track off that EP. Um, so the EP released hopefully in the fall or late summer um, will be called Stonemason's Son. Again, it's another metaphor for work and what it means to our families and what it means to us and our time here on this earth. Another life that was a stone mason's son waiting around on Papa and his work to be done. He'd trudge up our long drive, kick his boots off in the yard, grab himself a guitar and play it all night long. Daddy was a throwback, worked his fingers to the bone, laying down bricks in Cuyahoga Valley mud, just so me and mama never had to want for none, put his own dreams on hold, hoping his day'd come. Just like a runaway train If hope were the coal And the rails made of pain His calloused hands could sure make that old country and western rim Whipped them frets like a mortar Shook the walls when he sang So every morning paper thin He pulled himself up out of bed Put on a pair of steel-toed boots And he'd be off to work again But ain't life just like a runaway train If hope were the coal And the rails made of pain And fear is the engineer He's standing on the brake Ain't life just like a runaway train Never made it outside that Summit County line And we buried that six string With them Last fourth of July Now every time I think of him I see flashes in the night Colors burst and blacken And how even dreams die Keep rolling here. I'm gonna go off script a little bit. This is a new one. I 
think Waylon said it best when he asked, Ain't really done it like this. Cause I was down in the world of them love sick boys. Now I'm so lonesome that I cry cause I can't sing them right. At least not tonight. Cause I'm a low down. Worn out old fashioned country singer is likely to woo you as a rock you blind. I was up to no good, wouldn't change if I could. Gonna walk that line, afraid that I might die before I change my mind. Sure as Jesus died on the cross. Hank Williams died in the back of his car. So loners like me could sit at the bar and have a place to be, maybe drink for free. If you could play a few chords and sing. I'm a low down, worn out old fashioned country singer. It's likely to as a rock you blind I was up to no good wouldn't change if I could gonna walk that line many people tried and failed to change my mind Thank you, Joey. Thank you. So everyone who has stuck around through today's show, or if you just tuned in, uh, make sure that you check out, oh my gosh, what is it, Ray? Is that her name? Ray? Ray Lee. Ray Lee. Okay, first of all, check out Ray Lee in the background. So cute. Um, but also check out the Instagram and Facebook link that we posted in relation to Joey and his music because uh, a lot of what we've heard today is um, part of an EP that's going to be coming out in the very near future, probably summertime or you were saying possibly early fall. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, keep yourself connected so that you can um, stick around for when that is officially released and um, you're hearing it here for pretty much the first time. I think you said um, Lordstown, you just recently debuted on, was it Country de, de Monde? Yeah, Country to Mind, it's on Gimme Country. Um, and that, like, kind of, um, Jimmy was able to throw that in on a set and kind of, like, debut it for me to kind of get some, like, a like a well-positioned leak, if you will, um, okay. before anything comes out. And, yeah, I'm working on finishing up promotional assets for all that stuff, um, and there will be, uh, music will be had soon. Um, so I'm excited about that. It's the first time I've released music in a little while, and I'm excited to share it with everybody. Awesome. And what were the names of those last two songs for everyone listening that wants to, you know, know what to look for when it's uh, being released? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first one was called Stone Mason's Son. Um, and that one uh, is going to, it's the, I think the fifth track on the EP. It's the title track on the EP. Um, and then the second one is a new one that I've been workshopping lately. Um, it's called Old Fashioned Country Singer, another one I wrote during the pandemic. Um, after the EP and that one, um, I think, I think both O3 Envoy and, uh, 
that one will make the cut for the next thing I'm working on, which cool. it sounds silly to say, but you kind of have to, as things are, as I'm ramping up to release this other thing, I'm also ramping up to record <laughs> more so that you can, because you got to kind of do both at the same time at the very tail end here so that you can have music out in a timely fashion. So, uh, but I love it. I love writing and playing and I got lots of songs. So, um, yeah. yeah, those ones will be on the next one, I think. Yay. Don't, don't hold me to it, but I think I will. <laughs> um, okay, so then I know you're you're big into writing, and, and like you said, it's kind of a, a constant sort of domino effect because as you're gearing up to release one thing, you got to, you know, kind of get your ducks in a row with the next, next thing. And um, how do you go about, like, where does the inspiration for the songs and the, the creation come from? Like, do you have a melody in mind first and then do the lyrics follow afterwards? Or is there sort of a plot and a theme, lyrically speaking, that you have in mind and then you bring the melody into it after? Like, how do you tend to do that? So really, for me, oftentimes it starts with it starts with lyrics. Um, I really am very. To me, it's very important to like. I I'm kind of a serial cataloger of lines of titles of things that have you know hit me from across a bar room or at a gas station or things that people have said. Um, and those are those are like kind of the seeds that start a lot of songs um, and that's been one of the things about you know learning guitar in this past year and trying to master it um, as, as quickly as I can and just falling in love with it is that before it was always like for me it was like depending on other people to make the music and then I would try to fit the story that I built into that which was a fun writing exercise but I think for me I've really found this this craft of you know playing these songs on a guitar um, you know, like so many of my heroes have, like John Prine, like Jason Isbell, um, that in this way, like, like commune with this instrument, it, I think it's a time-tested thing for that reason. And so I've really fallen in love with that craft. And so a lot of times it does start with lyrics um, that I have kind of, that I kind of keep in a, in a notebook or on my phone. Um, and then mm -hmm. uh, they grow from that. Like as I, you know, as I find something that I like, I'm able to string some things together. Um, and put some chords to them or, you know, kind of come up with some chords and a, and a melody that I like, and then, you know, kind of retroactively taking some of those things to it. Um, and I, I do, I do write, I won't say concept albums, but I like to have a narrative arc and, you know, a collection of things that kind of speak to each other, if not mm -hmm. directly. So, you know, I kind of write those things and let them be what they want to be. And then after the fact, like try to find homes for them and think about, you know, I'm, I'm a huge, huge music listener and I, I listen to music constantly and really pride myself on trying to consume that as much as I can. New music, old music, so um, I love the album sequence and the, so I'm always messing around with that and pairing different things together, and, you know, in different track orders and stuff. So it's a really fun exercise and, and something that I enjoy doing. So it kind of all starts with that musical, that lyrical seed and then grows from there. Heck yeah. Well, and sorry if you can hear any of the music in the background. Um, our tasting room is back in full swing, and it's the weekend. So I don't know if you've ever been. Yeah, there's there's people galore up in here, and um, usually we, we turn the disco ball on and, and crank the music on the weekend. So we're excited to be back to slightly normal speed of things. Um, obviously, we're still holding off when it comes to the in-person live music acts, but um, we got to get that going again. And when we do, we'd love to have you join us over here, Absolutely. maybe bring the little guy and, and yeah. bring Miss Taurus. I don't know her name, actually, but bring bring the missus. Um, yes. Um, yeah, Miss Miss, uh, Miss Elizabeth, that, Elizabeth. You know, my Lizzie. Hi, she's watching with my son at my sister's house, so. Hi guys, it's good to see you virtually. Thank you for watching. Hi Elizabeth, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, we'll uh, give you a nice, a nice hefty pour of some butter, or some jam, and um, hopefully get you playing some music. It'd be yeah, a great time. That would be fun. I am looking forward to getting back on the road. It's been a, like I said, been a joy to be home with my son, but looking forward to doing that thing yes, again, absolutely. being on the road. Um, well, I think. We technically have like 10 more minutes since we started a few minutes past the hour. So why don't we close out with another two back to back? All right. Sweet. Let's do it. 
Um, while I'm here, I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I couldn't do this without the people who have supported me along the way. And thank you for sticking with me as I learn to conquer this instrument. I'm looking forward to the days that I can say, you know, no longer say this is the fourth time. This is the fifth time, which I think it is the fourth I've played in front of people, even virtually. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to learning this thing more and continuing this journey with you guys. So thank you for all, all for supporting me and being here with me. This one's called Glory Days. It's the closer to the EP. Um, my friend, my new friend Mallory Eagle sang this one with me. She's an Oklahoma City native. If you don't know her music, you should check it out. If you want to know more about the track listing and the people who played on it, it's really great. So um, just just hit me up, say hi. Um, I had a lot of great friends help me and new friends. So thank you. I'm rambling because I'm just I'm thankful. All right, glory days. Living off the reputation of a much younger man So when I got back to my hometown You would have thought I was Peter Pan But I never grew up, never got old Never got bitter, never got told That the world keeps spinning around It don't really give a damn God bless the glory days Cause time will only warp and fade But you don't hold closest to your chest Like a bottle which is one drink left Or smoke in your last cigarette It'll never taste quite as good As doing something Quite as good as doing 
something just because you could, yeah. Thank you all so much. Again, my name is Joey Friendo. Feel free to reach out. Say hi. I love meeting new people, and I've been starved of that during this pandemic. So come say hello. Tulsa, I'll be around. Say hi to the interwebs, on the internet webs. All right, last one. This is a new one. Um, I wrote it, finished it just before moving here um, to Tulsa. It's about starting a new chapter, leaving home. Um, yeah, it's called White River Blues. It's that Midwest charm that I've grown accustomed to It's that Catholic guilt that always seems to run me through It's that fickle apple blossom The spring has come too soon I know in the back of my mind I all will die Why the river blues So I'm headed Decided to live without But I could no longer carry Strapped right to my back And I buried the past in the Wago County line Cause I'm not Happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been Joey Friendo, everybody. Thank you to all of you that have tuned in today and um, hope your weekend's going to go great, Joey. Um, I don't know. Do you have any plans for the upcoming weekend? Just hanging out with my son. My wife is finishing grad school, so we're going to probably do park day tomorrow. Um, you know, throw nice. rocks in the river, do stuff like that. Heck yeah. Um, it's actually National Picnic Day today. So just Today? carry that over into tomorrow. Right. It's okay. No uh, one okay. has to know. <laughs> um, it's rainy here in Tulsa today, so we'll 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 uh, we'll we have we have reason to, to extend it on. So yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate it. It was really fun talking to you. You got it. Thank you, Joey. And uh, make sure if you're tuned in, 
Check him out at the links posted below for social media updates in terms of that new release that should be coming out uh, sometime this summer or early fall. And, of course, check us out at jamsellers.com if you want to get yourself stocked up or get your supply replenished. Um, we're over at jamsellers.com slash buy. Got a variety of ways. If you're in Oklahoma, you can still find where to buy our stuff. It's here. <laughs> and it is delicious. I'm not, a wine, I'm not a wine drinker normally, but it is delicious. It was very good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Joey. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.